right, welcome back. We are putting together a grappling mechanic inside Construct 3. In the last video, we got some sprites imported and our player control set up. In this video, we're going to set up a level for our player to roam around. And before I get into that, I want to do something that I don't normally do in my other tutorials, but it's a good habit to get into because it promotes being organized, which when you get into very large projects, you will thank yourself for doing these things. So on our event sheet, I'm gonna right click and go to add comment. And this first one, I'm going to just say player facing direction. And I'm going to drag it into our group at the very top because that's going to be what these two events are doing. You may not have a problem with this. It kind of blends in with the background here. But to me, it doesn't stand out. I'm going to right click on the comment, go to colors, and I'm gonna change my background color to a solid black. And I'll right click on it again, go to colors, change my text color to a nice bright yellow. This looks like nothing else in my event sheet. I know that it's a comment. I can start labeling things in my project. If we hold down control on the keyboard and click on it and drag out a copy, we can put one right there and double click to edit it. Left and right direction. And then I'm going to control click, drag out another copy, double click to edit. I'm just gonna call this player jump. Click, drag out another copy, uh, running animation, drag out another copy. This is going to be my jump animation. And one more here. I will call this idle animation. Obviously you don't have to do this if you don't want, but this helps me keep things organized. I don't have to stare at the code. If I'm looking for something, I can just go to my comments and see where everything is. Okay, let's go over to our layout tab. Over here in the layer panel, your setup will likely look different than mine. If you are working with a free version, you can only have two layers, I believe, and that's fine. If you only have two layers, then let's create that second layer right now. We can right click and say add layer to bottom. And I'm going to call this one background. My suggestion to you, if you are using the free version following along, to put the background on this background layer and everything else we create will go on your other layer. But for those of you working with a subscription version, we can highlight that layer zero. I'm going to call this one the player layer. I'm going to add another layer and I'm gonna call this one collisions and I will drag that down below player and another layer called objects and that will go below player above collisions. One more for now, I'm gonna call this our tile layer and that will go right above our background layer. So for subscription users, we want these five layers in this order. And again, if you have a free version, you want the background layer and one other layer that you'll put everything else on. Select our red collision here and that will bring up its properties. We can change the layer to collisions and then select our player. It should already be on the player layer, but you can change that if it's not. And I already noticed something. You notice our red collision disappeared. That is because we have a layer that is not transparent. For me, it is the player layer. If you click on the player layer over here in the layout panel, it'll bring up its properties and under appearance, transparent needs to be checked. None of our layers should have that unchecked. They should all have the transparent box checked. Okay. Let's make sure our background layer is highlighted and then we can click anywhere on our layout. And I want to insert a tiled background. We're going to use both tile map and tiled background, but for now I want the tiled background. So let's insert that. We can click anywhere. I wanna to go to our folder up here, load an image. And in the assets folder, I want the black BG tile. Open that and it should resize it automatically. It is 128 by 128, and that is all we have to do. 
Now I will point out that this is made this way so that we can stack as many as we want to the left, right, top, bottom, and they will all connect as if it's one big image. Exit out of that. I'm going to move to the top left corner. In fact, I'm going to click on the layout and go over to Snap to Grid and check that. And now it will snap to specific points. Let's start way out here. I'm going to actually zoom out a little and I'm going to drag it all the way across. In fact, I'm going to make it pretty big because we're going to do some parallax effects and I want to make sure that I have plenty of leftover space to move the background around in. So make it pretty big. Make sure that it covers this black box, this line in the middle. So if we click on the image, make sure that it is on the background layer and then we can go over to the background layer, lock it, and then just click anywhere. And now we can't move it. It will stay there permanently while we're in the editor. Over in our layout panel, let's highlight the tile layer and double click in our layout. Now we go down and let's choose tile map this time. Insert that, click anywhere. And let's go up here to load an image from a file. And I want this grass platform tile. Open it. It's just the one. That's all it is. But if we use it as a tile, we can paint with it. So exit out of that. While I have it selected, I'm going to rename it tile underscore platform. And I forgot to rename this one, our background. So I'm going to select it over here in the project panel and then rename it over here, tile underscore background. On our tile layer, make sure it is selected. And we want to make sure that the tile layer, this thing that's highlighted right now, covers this line, this square outline, which is this 2000 by 1000. So just make sure that yours covers that area as well. We can only paint our tile on the area that this box covers. Click on our collision tile. And since we have the snapping turned on now, I'm going to just kind of snap it into place like that. Control click, drag out a copy of it. I'm going to make it a little smaller, maybe right about there. And we can actually move our player over here, something like that. And I'll just drag out one more little copy here, just so we have something. And then with our tile selected, let's click on this one tile that we have. And I'm going to get our little pencil tool here. And I am going to draw where our collisions are. And right away, I see something I want to change. So let's go over here to our meta, click on our collision floor, it highlights all of them. But if we select it over here in the project panel, we can change the value of all of them. I want to change the opacity over here in the properties panel to, I'm going to make mine pretty low. I'm going to go 40%. Now we can see through them. Back on the tile, select the tile, the pencil tool, and I'm going to just paint where our collision is. And then let's select that collision floor again, our red one, go all the way to the bottom and uncheck initially visible. I'm gonna play that. So now we don't have to see our collision, but it's still there. And we can jump on our platforms. So now we have a working level. I want my level to start down here. I'm going to lock my tile layer because I don't want to move this tile piece. And I'm just going to work on collisions for right now. I'm going to drag these down because I want to be able to start down here and use the grapple to climb higher in the level. This does not have to be exact, but there are some things you want to pay attention to. We want to be careful of our distances. I'm just going up about one grid height at a time and making a little stair step. So with that part created, I'm going to unlock our tile layer, click on it, grab our tile piece and grab the eraser. I'm going to get rid of these up here. 
and then grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw in where our collisions are. Grab my player, come down here and just see what it looks like. I already forgot to do something so let's make sure our player is selected and in the properties scroll down edit behaviors add a behavior and this one called scroll to we will add that to him and that should be all we need hit play and that scrolls the camera view to our player see our camera now follows our player so now this is about what we're looking for we don't want him to hit the ledge but we also don't want a whole lot of room left because we want to be able to test our grappling in different situations and there's another height and it keeps going up and we'll be able to swing from these getting a little bit higher in elevation each time so I like the way that looks we'll be able to see those before we fly onto the next part of the screen that's good I am going to just drag that out a little bit more maybe to the edge The idea is our player will have the ability to swing from these locations where he wouldn't be able to jump to otherwise. Now we can lock the collisions so they don't get moved and make sure your tile is unlocked. Click on it and then I'm going to use my eraser tool to get rid of that one. Then I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and fill in where we haven't yet. I am going to add one more sprite. So let's double click on the layer. I'm going to add a sprite. I want that brown color from that tile. So I'm going to go to my folder and I'm actually going to get the tile. And then I'm going to get my color picker, my eyedropper tool. And I'm going to click on that brown so that it moves it into my color palette. I'm going to hit C on the keyboard to erase it, get my fill tool and fill it in with that solid color. Go to the resize image and I'm just going to put mine at 32 by 32, doesn't really matter. We're going to stretch it and we can come out of that. And I'm going to rename this tile underscore wall. And actually I'm going to go back into it, go to our origin and make sure it's at one of the corners. I like top left myself. That way it'll snap to grid correctly. And I'm going to make a border just so when we're in game, we know what's going on. And I can drag out a copy of that one and put one on this side. Go up to our collisions and unlock it. And then double click on our layout. Go down to our sprite and insert it anywhere. So what I want to create is a spawn point for our player. We're going to need to reference a starting point for a couple of different reasons. I'm going to make this a width of 16 and a height of 32. I'm going to put my origin point at the bottom left and I'm going to get my paint bucket and a nice little green color and you make yours any color you want. I'm just going to fill it and exit out of that and with it selected let's rename it obj underscore player mask that way we can drag our player off to the side all the way off and put our player mask wherever we want wherever we want our player to spawn from so i'm just going to set it right here for now in our event sheet i am going to close our player controls group select add an event go into system and I want on start of layout and let's add an action go into our obj folder grab our obj player and I want to set the position set position to the x value of our player mask so we can just type in the name of our obj player mask so obj it brings a suggestion up 
I'm going to say obj player mask dot x. And then for the y, I'm going to do the same thing. obj player mask dot y. I will move our player controls below that. I will right click, add a group, and I'm going to call this one initialize. And move that to the top and move this on start of layout event inside that initialize group. Let's go ahead and play this. And right there, it put it to its X and Y position, which is the bottom left of that green square. Uh, we will set this to invisible here in just a second. But now we uh, can spawn from that point. We have our layer set up. I'm going to exit out of that, select our player mask, scroll down and select initially visible, uncheck that. So another thing that we want to check for is if our player falls off the map or off the screen. I want to be able to spawn him back to this point. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to check his Y value. So if you look over here with it selected in position, we have X and Y. And if we move it around, that X and Y changes. Our X is our left to right and our Y is up and down. So the Y starts way at the top left corner. And if you see, I have the origin point right there on the bottom left at the very top corner. It's at zero, zero. If I move it up, the Y goes to a negative number. And if I start moving it down, we go to a positive number. At the bottom of our level is 992 for the Y value. Now I want to know once he falls off, I want to be able to say, okay, he's gone too far. Let's put him back to the spawn point. I think maybe something like that. So that's 1248 for the Y. I'll say an even 1200 for the Y. And remember, as our object moves down the screen, the Y value increases as a positive number. Back on our event sheet, let's add an event to our initialize group. Go into our OBJ folder, get our player, and we want to check his Y value. So I'm just going to start typing in compare, and I want compare Y. And we want to know if it is greater than, because the further it falls down off the screen, the Y value increases. And would we say 1200? So when our player's Y value is greater than 1200, I want to set the position back to the spawn point. So we can take this that we've already done, highlight it, hold control on the keyboard, click and drag down a copy. Let's go check that out. So we made our mask invisible. And if I run off the side of the level, once it gets past that Y point, it respawns us back where we were. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to exit out of that. And that is going to get us set up for our grappling mechanic. We have a level to work with, and we might need to adjust some of these and move them around, but that won't be difficult to do at all. One more thing before we go. I want to do a little bit more organizing. If you have the free version, you won't have the subfolders, so you won't have to worry about this. I'm going to move the OBJ player mask into our meta folder, close that up, and add another subfolder, and call this one tiles. And I'm going to move tile wall, tile platform, and tile background into that folder. It's all nice and neat and tidy. I'm going to stop the video there. In the next video, we are jumping into the grappling mechanic, and we will be in that for the rest of the videos in this series. I will see you in the next one, and make sure that we are saving often. <laughs>